Okay, I think it's on. Yes, oh wow. I can see there are 15 people here. That's so cool. Um, hi, for those of you that I know. Hi, Marianne. Oh, Tawara, Tawarge. Uh, this is Courtney. I am at Maitri Yoga, and I'm here to bring you the first um, maybe the only, but for sure the first life practice at my tree. Um, and it's, um, it is how it is, right? We are in plan B as in be present as in be with what is. And, um, it came to me yesterday. Oh my gosh, we can actually share some time together. So that is what this is about is having a practice, um, on, you know, in your own space, but together, um, you can see, I hope we can see, I'm going to make sure you get to see the mat because that's what we're here for. Um, if you, good, thanks for bearing with me on the setup. Um, if you haven't set up a space for yourself, I'm gonna give you a moment to do that. Grab a mat. Um, if you don't have a mat, just like your floor is great. And also you'll wanna have, um, if possible, some blocks. But I mean, who has yoga blocks in their house? Um, so you can have some books or even like, some pots, just something that you can put your hands on if you need a little bit more support. Um, and maybe a belt um, or a strap and for sure a blanket, um, a blanket that you can fold that can be kind of firm, okay? And if you had the time to set up a whole little sanctuary like I did this morning, uh, great. And if not, maybe you have a candle or you have a flower, or you have a card that you can set up, okay? So um, I want to also thank my friends at Studio Laterale for the great idea of setting up a beautiful chalice space. And um, they have a really great video on their Instagram with that, if you want to see it. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and get ourselves settled. Um, great. So go ahead and... Yeah, find your seat. Um, I have here a blanket that I'm sitting on and it's just allowing me to support the hips and let the knees release. And when you feel like you're settled, um, just take a moment and you can bring your hands maybe onto your body, maybe one hand onto your heart space and the other hand onto your belly. And just start to check in with yourself. And maybe let your breath release. And this presence, what is here within you right now? And know that whatever is arising, whatever emotions or sensations or thoughts are coming up, that everything is welcome. That right now, as each of us is in our own space, gathering ourselves within, we are all connected, quite literally in this moment, through this amazing platform. But maybe more importantly, we're all connected into this collective consciousness that is waking up. Yeah? And sometimes in order to really wake up and to really um, become present, we need to get really still and we need to get a little bit quiet. And so today this practice is offered with that intention for us to get a little bit still get quiet, and to get connected. And so as you feel yourself maybe settling a little bit more, if you haven't closed your eyes, let's close our eyes. And just presence your body wherever your body is contacting the earth. And start to give some of your weight over into the ground. And from that support of the earth, 
Feel your spine rise tall and start to feel this length that comes through the spine as you root down through your base, through your pelvic floor, through the perineum, and as you draw and harness that energy all the way up the spine to the very top of your head. And then you might even begin to imagine that from your base, you can grow roots down to the ground. And from your crown, you can extend almost like an antenna rising up to the ceiling and to the sky beyond. And in this way, feel yourself come into the center of yourself, of your being, and yet also fully plugged in. Attune to the quality of energy, whether that's through sensation or thought or emotion that's passing through you. Notice your breath. And take a nice full breath in through your nose. And release it out your mouth. <sighs> Join me a couple more times. Breathing always on your own rhythm. Let's welcome ourselves. Let's welcome each other. Bring your palms together. If you're bringing a particular intention to your practice, you can honor that now by pressing your thumbs to your heart and letting your heart rise up. And just know and maybe tune in for a moment to the collective. I have no idea how many we are right now. It doesn't matter. Because in this very moment, there are people all over the world who are tuning in who are waking up and so let's welcome each other to this to this waking up and take a full breath in through your nose release out your mouth and we'll welcome each other with our voices chanting the sound of home breathe to your grace Oh. Let's do it again. Breathing in. all the way from your base up, out your heart, out your mouth, at the crown of your head, and know that your sound is received around the world. into yourself. Welcome to your practice. Good. So you can join me um, coming on to all fours. If you have a blanket that you want to put underneath your knees, you can do so. Just spreading it wide. And root down, knees come right underneath your hips. And wrists come right underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers wide. And then just take a moment to start to find your breath. So we're going to arch the back and round the back. And let your movement 
be guided by your breath. So in the practice today, it's not about following exactly what I'm doing and doing it just how I do it, yeah, but really about connecting with what you need, what's moving through you right now. So go ahead and just find your cat cow, find your breath, and connect to the support through your feet, through your hands. And then next time you round your spine, pull your toes together, take your knees wide, and slide back into child's pose. You can let your forehead touch down. You can keep your elbows active. And just go ahead and stay there for a few breaths, just in child's pose, feeling the sense of connection now through the crown of your head. And sense that if there's anything you're holding, here in your mind right now, that there's this little door. I love to think of it as a little door in your forehead. And you can just release any thoughts that are not serving you right now, that you're able and ready to let go of. And at any point during your practice, as you need a chance to just pause or rest, please take it. And child's pose might be the perfect way to do so. So taking an inhale breath, we'll come out of child's pose. We'll come back to all fours. Tuck your toes. And then just lift your knees a little bit off the ground and start to feel your navel engage. Start to feel your belly make you nice and strong here. And so we can support ourselves from this outer core, from the abdominal muscles. We're also going to explore the inner core line from the root to the, to the crown. Bring your knees back down and go ahead and come to sit back with your toes tucked. Your toes tucked. If this is your first time we're practicing together, well, welcome. And also, um, you'll get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the most comfortable place at first, so only be here as long as it's okay for you. But I'm sitting up high on my heels, and as we inhale, we'll sweep the arms out wide and bring them all the way up. You can interlace through your fingers and then stretch your palms up to the sky. Let your shoulders drop away from your ears, and then pull your navel back. Breathe into the back of your body and start to sense, again, this line from base to crown. And go ahead and release your hands down. You can lengthen your toes one more time. And then take your right leg back, reach it straight back behind you. And as you exhale, follow your knee to your nose. Inhale, reach it long, and you can stay with this movement, keeping both hands down. Or if you want to, take your left arm up, your opposite arm, and then try pulling elbow and knee together. Keeping a nice connection through whatever's touching the ground. And then one more time, pull it in, squeeze it, and then release it. And switch your sides, keeping that support from the navel. Left leg goes back. You can find length by extending through the toes. And on your exhale, bring it in, round the spine. Gaze can come forward. Then you can add in your arm whenever you like, if you like. Or just keep both hands down. This last time, let's pause, grip a little bit the earth with your left fingertips, and then release down. One more time, tuck your toes. I'll do it sideways this time, just so you can see. So you're sitting on your heels, 
Your outer hips are hugging in. You're feeling a lot of support through the sides of your body. And then take the arms up one more time. Interlace your fingers the other way. So the other next finger goes in front. Extend up. Arms are long and strong and straight. Yeah? And then you'll notice that your chest and your belly want to pop forward. So go ahead and draw the navel back. Sit a little bit more into your heels. Find breath on the back line. You can soften your tongue and your jaw. And then release the arms back down. Go ahead and walk your hands forward, knees back, lifting your knees again one more time. And then we'll slide back into downward facing dog. And in your down dog, just take a moment to walk it out. Mm, just to see what feels good here. Maybe a little twisting, maybe a little wagging your tail. <laughs> and then come into stillness. Take a big bend in your knees as you lengthen through the spine. Reach your heels now down towards the earth, pressing shoulder blades onto the back. And follow the next in-breath, walking your feet forward towards your hands. Come to Uttanasana, to your forward fold. Generous bend in the knees, folding right at the crease of your hips. Grab hold of your elbows. Let yourself rest through the top of the head. Finding your weight even through both feet. And then start to charge up the legs by squeezing in a little bit to the center. Release your hands. And let's roll ourselves up this first time, just finding articulation through each vertebra. Coming all the way to stand. Cool. So I'm going to do just a little check-in um, and make sure that you are able to hear me and that it's working. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> I just saw you there. Um, I know I hate to disrupt the flow, but I think it's good. Seems to be good. So we will continue. Um, if you can't hear or something, just like type and I might see it pop up. Okay. So. Oh, thanks, Carrie. Love you. Okay. So you can move your blanket, if you like, um, off to the side. And go ahead and come to the front of your mat. Take a moment to find your distance. So you can measure your heel, one heel, into your big toe. And then slip it back out again. Bring your hands down by your sides. And just pause for a moment, really finding your center. So maybe shifting weight forward and back, hugging legs in, finding your breath. And follow the next inhale, arms sweep up overhead, bring your palms together, exhale, fold down the center line. Generous bend for your knees, hands to the earth. Now if your hands don't quite come down to the ground, time for your blocks, yeah? So if your hands don't come to the ground, if you're like hovering away from the ground, have some support. We need the support right now, don't we? And so let's really offer it to ourselves. So bring your hands onto blocks or onto the earth, and then step your left foot back, slide your blocks back with you. Left foot back, keep your knee lifted here, and just find length and space. Sometimes it feels good to go a little bit forward and back and just kind of release. But as you find the center, really plug in through your feet, through your hands, and then let your spine from tail to crown lengthen. On your next exhale breath, blocks can move off to the side and you can step back again toward dog. From your dog, find plank pose. 
Shoulders can come right over your wrists, and you can keep your legs elevated, or you can bring your knees down. Maybe for this first one, knees down feels a little bit more supportive. And then we'll lower ourselves down, elbows bending straight back, chest coming to the earth. Long through your toes, supported, inhale, baby cobra. And exhale to lower down. And try it two more times with your breath, just finding the length rather than the lift. Your legs are key here. And then you can press yourself back, coming to your dog. And stepping your left leg forward. Now, if your leg doesn't just float through, take a couple of steps and use your hand to support you. Okay? Blocks as needed. Finding center. Finding stillness. Notice the quality of your mind in that silence. And then walk your blocks forward. Use the support of your base to pull your back leg forward into Uttanasana, folding. One more time, grabbing hold of your elbows, opposite elbow first, releasing down, maybe shifting a little bit side to side. And then this time, we'll bring hands to hips. We'll keep a little bend in the knees and find length through the spine as you inhale and rise up. Float the arms up. Exhale, palms to your center. Check in with yourself and inhale, sweep the arms up again. Folding forward, Uttanasana, palms to blocks or earth, lengthen on the inhale. And exhale, step your left foot back. Keep your back leg lifted. This time, come up into a high lunge. Nice bend through the front knee. And again, just settling in. Let your hands release down by your sides. Squeeze your legs together like scissors and draw that support all the way up through the center line as your arms float up. Softening shoulders away from your ears. Slit the corners of your mouth. Relax. Exhale, bring your hands down. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward, plank pose. Keeping knees up or down, lower yourself to the earth. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Plug in through your fingers and through your feet. Inhale to look forward. So if your left foot between your hands, float up. Hmm. Actually, let's keep the arms down just to start, just to find center. If you're finding your back leg is having trouble getting really connected, just bend it a little. Sometimes just taking a bend allows us to pull in so that then we can extend and really find support. Arms can float up from that space. So when we're really plugged in, when we're really grounded, then there's a support for freedom and for flow. But we've been trying to get a lot of freedom and flow without a lot of plugging in, no? I'm not the only one. Exhale, bring your hands down. Find your blocks, step yourself forward, Uttanasana. This time, bringing your hands behind your back, hooking your thumbs, and extending through the arms, let your head release. Lifting gently the shoulders, tops of your shoulders away from your ears to lengthen the back of your neck. Your legs can be bent as much as you need to keep your belly and your thighs connected. And feeling your navel scoop towards the spine. Release hands to hips, strong through the legs, inhale to rise all the way up. Floating the arms up, hands to your heart space. Good. Let's take one more nice flow, sweep the arms out. Exhale to fold. Hands to blocks or earth, inhale, lengthen. 
This time, exhale, step your right foot back. Keep your back heel lifted. Keep your right hand on the ground. Maybe turn your left toes out just a little bit and slow your left arm up to the sky. Then you can just find some nice big circles here. Super sweet. Lots of space. And then bring your hand back down to the center. Turn your back toes open. And as you inhale, float yourself up and find a sweet little warrior two. Nice bend through the knees. Just check your alignment. So you've got your front heel in line with the center arch of your back leg. <sighs> Settle in. Find that spacious expansion that comes when you're really rooted through your base. Sensing the crown of your head right over the base of your pelvic floor. On your next inhale breath, you can straighten that front leg. Tip your back hand to your back leg. Keep your fingers light here. And find a nice line all the way from your front toes to your fingers. Maybe looking up towards your hand if that feels right. And then on an inhale, come back through warrior two. Exhale to find your hands down on the earth and to step back <clears throat> down a split left leg coming up to the sky. Find length here. Bend your knee. Make a few sweet circles with that left knee, that lifted knee. Shoulders stay steady. Go both directions. And then place your foot down to the earth. Inhale, float forward, plank. Knees up or down, come to the earth. Rise up, cobra. If you're feeling up for an up dog, go for it. And downward facing dog. And then take your left, uh, right leg, excuse me, right leg, bring it up. Bend your knee this time. Make your circles go both directions. We're doing the opposite side, we're doing a little bit of a backwards flow on this part. And then extend your leg way back behind you, step forward. And float yourself up. Oh, wait, it's live, so I made a little, a little boo boo. <laughs> Left hand on the ground, right foot turns out. That's where we were, right? Yeah. Good. If, uh, <laughs> if y'all were in here, I know you'd let me know. Okay, so anyway, let's find our circles. Right arm. And here, it can be really nice to trace your movement with your eyes. And then to float the hand back down. Turn your right toes forward as they came out to the side and come up for your warrior two. Again, taking a moment to settle in. And then as you're settled with your feet aligned, your knee nicely bent, with an even sense of support through your legs, as you find yourself there, then be still. So we can create a container that can support whatever is moving through us in any moment. As you straighten your front leg, let the back hand touch the back leg and find the length from toes to fingers. Find the support through the inner core line. And then come back through an inhale into your warrior two. And then release down. This time, lift your back leg, bring it in, Uttanasana. 
folding in, taking the other thumb in front. You can extend long through the arms. Your quadriceps are active here. Your calves are active, supporting the back line of your body. Notice how you can release your tongue, the corners of your eyes. And then release your hands to your hips. Press down to rise up. Floating arms. Exhale, hands into the heart space. Just check in. Hmm. Nice. Good. I need a sip of water. So if you need a sip of your tea, grab one. We are going to take some some postures with blocks or support, perhaps. Hmm. This is kind of nice, right? Just, here we are, doing our practice. Okay, so, <clears throat> this is truly, yeah, plan B. Live, uh, live action. Legs are wide, so you're coming towards uh, kind of Prasarya Padasanasana. Toes a little bit turned in and support through your feet. So you can feel a little bit, not your toes gripping, but just the soles of the feet lifting up through the legs. Feel the muscles of your legs lift up. Feel the pelvic floor lift up a little bit. You can take that all the way from the top of your head. You can extend your arms out wide and send that energy all the way out through the fingertips. Feel yourself really supported here, yeah? Take a full breath in through your nose. Exhale. Try it one more time. Breathing in, draw all of this earth and supportive energy to your center. And then as you exhale, extend it out through your fingertips. Good. Bring your hands down to your hips. Slightest bend in your knees or giant bend if you need it. Folding right at the crease of your hips. Coming all the way forward, bring your hands down to the ground, release through the top of your head. And then as you inhale, lengthen your spine. Turn your, uh, here it's your left toes. Why not? You can do your left toes, <laughs> wherever you are at home. Bend your front knee. Have a block, most probably, to the outside of your ankle. And we'll start here with elbow on the knee. So we're coming. <clears throat> to side angle pose with a nice bend through the knee, and then just bring your hand to your ribs, yeah, to your bottom ribs, to your left ribs. And see if you can just bring some space in here. A little breath. Try not to collapse on like a pillow. I'll we'll do the practice with Kelly Griswold. She used to give that metaphor, it was a really good one. No, don't use your shoulder like a pillow. And then as you exhale, start to feel your ribs wrap around. And notice how that lets your heart and maybe even your gaze turn up. All of a sudden, we come out of ourselves. Take your arm alongside your ear. Get nice and long through the side of your body. Feel free to be here. You might want a little more energy coming through your, through your center. So you can bring your elbow into your inner knee. You could also bring your fingertips just to rest towards the earth. You choose what's supporting you right now. I mean, breath, space. On your exhale, release yourself down. Walk your hands on a huge, huge circle. Let your left toes turn forward. And then let your right toes turn back. And we'll come to the other side. Finding elbow on your knee. Taking a moment to set up. Don't worry, we're going to get back to the block, I promise. For those of you that are like, why is there a block there? We'll get there. Grounding. Feeling that support come in. Turning, I love to use my hands to really feel like what is going on in the body. Yeah. 
And then from that support, the arm is just this beautiful extension. Yeah, it's light. And it's light because it's supported from within. Find the variation for your arm that feels right for you, either to the inner knee or fingertips to the earth. It might be different on different sides. And then release hands to the earth. One more time, walk it around. Let it get really big, this little walk you do. And then go ahead and walk your hands back. Bring them to your hips. Squeeze the legs towards each other, pressing down to float up. Yeah. Nice. If you need a little pause for your inner thighs, you can do this weird dance. Bring your feet in, shake it out. Yeah. Maggie, if you're still here, you can do some shaking. Ah, scusa. Maggie, se siete qui, se siete qui, puoi fare come così, passa perfetto per i bimbi. Good for the kids, but really for the grown-ups. And then go ahead, come back. One more time, left toes turn out. Yeah, still have that heel to the inner arch. And then go ahead, take a big bend in your knee. Reach out long. So let this arm just find a nice extension. You're so supported by your back leg, by your inner core, that you could just hang here, but we're not going to. We're going to start to straighten through that front leg. Reach down, find your block. Yeah? So again, block could be books, could be a pot, could be anything you can rest your hand on. Yeah? You can also come up nice and high. Jane, if you're still here, don't forget to micro bend your knee. Yeah? Jane, me, all of the um, hyperextenders on the knees. Find length and space here. And then again, you can use your hand to turn. Float the arm up. Tree Konasana. Hmm. And as you arrive, just enjoy. Allow for whatever is passing through you. And allow your body, the shape, the form, to express the inner connection here. How does that change the flavor of the pose? Mm. Bring your hand to your hip. Look down to the earth. Take a bend in your knee. Just pick up whatever you're using for your support. It's a fancy trick. Bring it with you. Set it down, other side, right foot. Nice big bend through your knee to begin. Extending out through the side. Pause. Notice what part of you is holding you up. Can you give a little bit over? Can you let yourself be a little bit more supported? Ah. And then from there, begin to straighten through that front leg. Find your hand to your block. Let your hand really press down. Yeah. Offer that. Wherever you're pressing, you'll find support to then draw yourself and turn around your center axis, base to crown. And then the wings of your arms can really expand all the way through fingertips. And then you can soften a bit. Soften the edges. Allow yourself to be even held here. Maybe offering your heart a little bit more. Looking down towards your front foot, bend your front knee, head to the hip. You can, well, just bring your block with you, why not? <laughs> and turn your toes to face forward. And go ahead and bring everything back in. Wonderful. Hmm. Let's go ahead and start to move a bit down towards the earth. So you can take your block for support. We're gonna come into Malasana, which is a squat. 
Um, for some of you, the block or the support will be necessary. For others, not so much. So you can just come to sit down here. I'm going to at least lower mine a bit. Knees are pressing into the backs of your arms. Palms are pressing against one another. And yet you can feel that the center of your palms, they move away from one another, creating a little space. And then that space moves through the channel of your arms and into your heart. And there's this really nice circle or loop between your hands and your heart. Let your head release and just for a little bit, look down towards the earth. Find a place to drop your attention, your awareness. And now I'm going to give you a couple of options, okay? So the first option is for those of you who um, practice arm balances, you can, we're going to come into Vikasana. If you've never tried it, you can totally give it a try. Um, and then for those of you that aren't practicing arm balances, you can come into Baddha Konasana. Yeah, so maybe I'll show Baddha Konasana first. Um, my path is a little bit high for me. I would do this more on like a blanket. Um, but you'll want to have your feet together and your knees apart. And you can also bounce. I don't know if you can see that. You can bounce your knees. It gives a nice... Um, nice release. Yeah, so that's a more kind of restorative, grounded option. If you're coming to Vikasana into Crow Pose, this is going to be fun. Probably don't need your block, although sometimes bringing your feet on the block helps if it's challenging to get your feet off the earth. You need to bring your hands to the ground, plug in through your fingertips, squeeze the backs of your um, arms, squeeze the backs of your arms with your knees, and start to shift your weight, you'll lift your heels, yeah, lift your bum, plug into your fingers, there are your brakes, look forward, and see if you can play with lifting and squeezing your heels towards your seat. Now, if maybe for you, you're here and you're like, ah, how do I get up? Try lifting one foot and then the other foot. Yeah? So maybe that's your practice. Yeah? The cool thing is, like, no one can see what you're doing. So have some fun with it. If you need um, what some people affectionately call a crash pad, just more for, like, psychological support, put a blanket, something soft in front of you. Okay? So I'm going to give you a minute just to play with your crow pose, or if you're in Baddha Konasana, and maybe you've had enough of this bouncing business, you can be still, and you can either take your peace fingers to your big toes, your hands to your ankles, and just come forward. So again, crow pose, or holding forward in Baddha Konasana. So wherever you are, just take a moment to just presence the quality of your thoughts, of your heart, of sensation in your body. And maybe ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now, is it serving my intention and our collective intention to be connected into the um, power of waking up, of presence. It's kind of a big question, <laughs> but it's a very simple answer. So if whatever you're doing right now on your mat, in your life, is not supporting you to be connected and awake, Maybe you can try something else. Yeah. Good. So, wherever you are, let's get back together. That was a little bit renegade to let people, you know, 
go do their own thing, but my goodness, how important to be able to take a moment and just see for yourself on your mat. Okay, so from here, let's go ahead and take the legs and just extend them out. Um, if you're not <clears throat> sitting up on something, I really recommend that you do. Again, a firm blanket is great, or you can always fold your mat, yeah? So you can take the mat and just like, kind of roll it up, do a little bit better job than I just did, but get something that allows for your hips to be a little bit higher up. There we go. So that you can really release any tension around your hip flexors. Now, knees. You may need to keep your knees quite bent here. That's totally cool. That's a great idea, okay? If you're hyperextending, just make sure you do keep at least some bent. Toes are flexed. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, take your arms out wide. Remember we just did this standing to see how it feels to be on the earth here. You can turn your palms up. And then one more time as you inhale, reach the arms up. Keep the arms alongside your ears. Drop shoulders down. And as you exhale, twist towards your right leg. Try to keep your outer hips steady. Let the twist come really from the rib cage, turning around that center axis. And then exhale, start to fold yourself forward. Let your hands touch down on either side of your right leg. Take a moment here just to settle in. And for some of us, this will be where we stay. For some of you, you might find you have the space to reach your left arm out to the outer edge of your foot, or you may have something like a strap, um, a, blank, uh, a belt works. More. So you can take that as well. You can also take both hands there on your strap or to the outer edge of your foot. And then some of you will find that you're able to start to release, bringing your nose towards your knee, in which case, take your right hand, bring it to the outside, and really work to draw the right ribs long. Notice that this left hip can get a little bit light, so keep your seat rooted. And then as you inhale, go ahead and come back up. And we'll take the other side. So we'll take the arms out wide, inhaling. Exhale to ground through your legs. Float the arms up on the inhale. And exhale, twist to your opposite leg, left leg. Finding space on the inhale and on the exhale, letting yourself fold. Hmm. We'll just start to bring your attention to some of the more subtle sensations. Yeah. You can take the variation that works for you. So it could be hands are strapped to your foot. It could be right hand to the outer edge of your foot. Remember that wherever you're making contact, that's a place of support. That's where you can source energy. So when my hands and my foot connect, then I can use that to come back into my center. And from my center, my heart, in this case, then I can extend and give it back in this really sweet flow. I could probably stay there for a lot longer. I love that. Yeah, what about you? Mm -hmm. And if you don't love it, it's okay. Yeah, just note that. I don't love this. <sighs> love. <laughs> it's like fully the theme here. Okay, let's go ahead and pull the legs back together. Whoa, slowly, slowly, slowly. <clears throat> and extend it out. And extend it out. Good. From here, I'm going to turn to my side. So you can kind of see what's up. Take a sip of water. Lemon water. Doing the detox. 
Beautiful greens, people. If you're not doing it, there's still time. No, but seriously, seriously, it is a time <clears throat> for release and renewal. And twists help us do that, which is why we're kind of getting into that today. Right leg crosses over. Sit up nice and tall here. Feel the support coming into the center. Left arm extends. And as you exhale, let yourself go ahead and twist around. Elbow can come either to the outside of your knee, to the inside. You choose your variation today. Back hand behind you. If your hand doesn't quite reach the ground, ta-da, that's why you have blocks or books, wherever you got. And then take about five, I'm just gonna turn my head this way so you can hear me. Take about five full breaths here. Just finding your way in. And as you find yourself sort of at the end of your twist of the movement, release the inner groins, release the inner thighs rather, and soften just the edge so that you can truly receive your breath. On the inhale, you can bring your gaze forward. You can just take a moment and look the other way. And release, unwind. Extend both legs out and pause in Dandasana and the staff pose, letting your hands touch down to the ground. Presencing the center axis, base to crown. Feeling yourself rooted into the earth and connected to the sky and beyond. Pull your left leg in, cross it over. Of course, if crossing your leg over doesn't quite work for your knee in particular, you just keep it to the inside. On your breath, take the right arm long. Keep all that space through the sides as you exhale and twist. Back hand comes behind you. Breath by breath, entering. Entering into the pose. Entering into an awareness of this moment, your body, your breath in this moment. Let your gaze just come over the opposite shoulder to enjoy lengthening through the side of your neck. And release. One more time, coming back into staff pose, hands by your sides. This time you can ground really nicely, depending on the length of your arms. Those of you perhaps me, you have like really long arms. <laughs> so I can just press straight down. Spread wide through the chest. And then as you exhale, draw your knees, bring them in close. If you're, well, you should be on a blanket, so come off your blanket. Um, set it off to the side. Hands can come behind you now. Hands are behind you. Feet are on the earth. Fingers are grounding in. Inhale and rise up into a reverse tabletop pose. And just pause. For now, let's keep our gaze towards our knees and feel the support on the front line, breathing into this back line. 
and then lower yourself down. Now, if that feels good for you, so good for the neck, the shoulders, the whole thing, um, you can stick with it, and or you can take reverse plank. But before, boat pose. So, and it helps when you sing the poses that aren't your favorite, in case you didn't know. So, <laughs> pull your knees into your chest, turn your palms face up, Find, again, support inner and outer core. If you'd like to try extending your legs, ooh, and then maybe like me, I'm getting a little wobbly here. You can extend your legs. And then let's lower it down. Just give yourself a hug. Ugh. Especially since we're not like hugging each other. People hug yourself, okay? And then go ahead and take reverse plank. So reverse plank or reverse tabletop. Hands are behind you. Plug in through your fingers. Ground through your heels. And use the breath to rise up, to float up, to fly up. Feel that you can harness all of this energy into the center of your chest. And then expand it down to your fingers, into your pelvis. Expand it down into your toes. If it feels good, let your head release back. Let your face relax. And release it down slowly. Ah, oh, so good. Boat pose one more time. Hmm, I learned this really nice trick from a great teacher in Zurich, Miriam, Miriam Heyman. Go see where you can go to Zurich. Bring your fist and your palm together, and then you can take little twists here. So your legs are steady, here we go, and then so while your legs are steady, and you're just twisting, and then come back to the center, switch fist into the palm, and twisting, mm -hmm. and then come back to the center, one more time, give yourself a hug, cross the other leg in front. <sighs> Good, and then let's just rock it back and forth a few times on your spine. And next time you rock forward, cross your ankles, pop yourself back into your downward facing dog. Take a nice flow through. If you're feeling like that's a bit much, then stay in dog. From your downward facing dog, bend your knees. Lift your heels. Reach long through the sides of the body. And then drop your knees slowly all the way down. Keep your toes tucked. Pull yourself back. Remember this. Sit back when your heels roll through the shoulders. Good. Now, some of you may have a headstand practice. Yeah? Some of you won't. If you have a headstand practice and you feel um, comfortable doing it at home, then go for it. Um, use a wall, use whatever props you need or have available. If you don't have a headstand practice, yeah, um, we're not gonna start today, okay? But maybe we'll, who knows how often we'll do this or how long we'll be here, but maybe we'll go through it another time. Yeah? If you don't have a headstand practice but you'd like to take an inversion, you can join me now. So you will need something, either your blanket, like super folded as much as you can, like a really, this is like a burrito. Sometimes we make taquitos, guys. This is more of a burrito, okay? If you actually have some blocks or a block at home, use your block, okay? So. Again, we're going a little bit rogue here. Take care of yourself. We'll take a minute, either headstand or join me on your back. With, I'm gonna do it with a blanket because I'm guessing more of you have blankets than have blocks at home. So with your blanket, come to lie on your back, your knees are bent. P.S. If you are menstruating or you're pregnant or you just don't have an emergent practice, 
um, or you just yeah don't want to hurt, um, go ahead and you can stay. Uh, you can stay right here, and you can offer yourself a nice little organ massage with your fingers. Yeah, and that's also partly what we're doing with this inversion. Yeah, it's just giving our organs a chance to have a little break. So, if you're joining me, lift your seat, slide your blanket or your block or your support, whatever it is, right underneath your sacrum. Okay, and your sacrum, it's you'll if you feel if you're not sure what it is, you'll feel it's kind of feels like this flat bone. I mean, why am I showing this? It's it's like a big oval, basically. Okay, right above your coccyx, and then pull your knees towards your chest, and then just take your legs up. Okay, feet can be flexed. Try to let your soles of your feet rest right over your pelvic floor. So we're finding another center line here. The arches of your feet over the pelvic floor. Hands can rest on your body or out to your sides. And you can just allow your breath to help the body, the back line of your body be supported into the ground. If you're in your headstand, being mindful as well of the support through your wrists on the earth, your forearms, and sourcing that support to maybe lift a little bit more through the soles of your feet. You can all do that. Lift up through the soles of the feet. And then let's start to bring the knees in towards the chest. Bring your feet down to the earth. Lift up through your seat and slide your blanket away. Okay. Take a little pause here. If you came down from the headstand, make sure you pause in a child's pose or just seated for a moment. Let your body recalibrate. And then bring your knees into your chest. I really like to just get a little fluidity going, little circles. You can rock side to side if that feels nice for you. Mm -hmm. And then come back to the center. Place your feet down one more time. And if you're just joining us on your back, then join us. Again, if you're choosing not to invert here, you can play with more of a half happy baby or maybe a full happy baby, depending on what feels best in your body. Otherwise, we're gonna take a bridge pose, which is also kind of inversion. So we'll make robot arms, elbows on the earth, fingers to the sky, press down, and rise up through your hips. You can walk a little bit your shoulders underneath you. And as you ground through the soles of your feet, feel your hips elevate, feel your glutes, your bum, Support two. Let the neck be soft and the breath flow freely. Maybe interlace or hook thumbs underneath. And then if you're feeling like you want to have a little bit of extra energy going, you can walk your feet together, pull your right knee into your chest, and then length and extend your toes way up to the sky. Try to keep your hips even. You can play with flexing, with pointing. Bring it down. This is an option, optional. And when you are ready, release your hands. Touch your seat down first. And draw your knees in slowly. Actually, I would prefer to give us a little more time, but maybe not so much, just out to the side. <laughs> Good. If you would like to take another bridge pose, go for it. Um, if you have a full wheel practice and you'd like to take full wheel, you can as well. Um, I'm not going to guide us through that as well. I'm being cautious because I don't know who's here. 
<laughs> but I'm really glad you're here. So take care of yourself. And again, either bridge pose or full wheel. I'm going to take one more bridge pose. And in this bridge pose, again, if you'd like to have a little bit more um, energy, especially if this is a morning practice and you feel like you want to just get some strength and a little bit of support in that way, pull your right knee in to get up to the sky and then just play here, inhaling and exhaling. You're trying to keep your hips steady, keeping your hips steady and really pressing for your standing leg. And then you can do that a few times and switch sides. I'm not talking because I'm really needing my breath for this. And then come down. Pause here. Bring your knees together, bring your feet wide. You can let your hands rest on your low belly. And then let's pull the feet together and shift your seat over to the right side. You can pull your knees up a little bit towards your chest and then extend, knees are going over to the left and extend your arms out or take your cactus arms and join a nice twist here. You can turn and look either way. See if you can have both of your shoulder blades touching the ground, backs of the shoulders touching the ground. And you can soften your face. Coming back into the center. Once again, find shoulders and hips. Shoulders and hips aligned, yes. And then send your seat over to the left. Lift your knees, bring them over to the right. So we make that little micro adjustment with the seat so that when you twist, you're actually twisting around the center from base to crown. Instead of just moving your body to one side. Attune to the sound of your breath. Anywhere that you sense you're holding yourself up, might you surrender? And come back into the center. Mm. One more good squeeze. You can even give yourself some kisses. Mwah. Mwah. And go ahead and lower your head down. Keep your left knee in. Interlace your fingers around the shin and draw the knee in close to your chest. And then let's extend that leg straight up to the sky. Use your fingers, interlace behind your thigh, or use a strap around the ball of your big and little toe. You can press the leg away from your body, and you can pull your leg in closer to your body. Maybe slide the hands up further if that's appropriate. The leg on the earth is rooted. If you find that there's a big gap between your thigh and the ground, you can always bend this knee. And you'll feel how that changes the quality of your spine as well. All right, one more time. Release the leg away from you. And this time, bring your hands pretty low, really onto the belly of the hamstring muscle, and press your leg away from you as you ground the femur bone back into the hip socket. So feel like your heel is rooting towards the earth. Shoulders 
Coming onto the back. And release your hand. Let your leg touch down. Enjoy that you probably feel taller, somehow longer on that side. And then pull your right knee in. Fingers interlace the other way around your shin. Get in close. And then extend it up. Start away from your body. Feel the natural curves of your spine, a little space around the low back, around the neck. If you find, I forgot to say that, if you find when you're on your back now that your chin is really lifting up and it's straining your neck, you can use your pillow or your blanket rather to give yourself like, <laughs> to give yourself a little pillow. Okay, so you can do that as well. And then as you exhale, just let the leg come in closer to your body. And release the hands back down to the belly of your hamstring muscle. Press the leg away, your arms will come towards straight here or your strap, using your strap. Just feel it here. It's like you're resetting, realigning. That's really what this whole practice is about, is realigning. But that particular pose as well. Okay, I'm going to move my blanket. And then here we are, lower backs. Now, we are going to have a Shavasana. Absolutely. So if you've made it this far, um, like enjoy the dessert, okay? Um, what you can do, and what I recommend you do to really get the most of your shavasana is put on your sweatshirt, I'm gonna grab mine, grab your blanket and put it over you, lay it, lay yourself out nicely. Um, move any props that are in your way. If you're around your house and there are people and you can maybe just kindly let them know that you're going to have a rest, invite them to have a rest. Maybe put something soft over your eyes. And enjoy. Oh, and if you have, because then you'll really feel like you're here, guys. If you have an oil, I have balance. I've been using this like, uh, like it's my job. Um, if you have an oil, a good quality oil, that's safe to use on your skin, then you can take a drop into your hands and rub your hands together and take a few nice full breaths. Just bring your hands anywhere onto your body that you feel like you want a little nourishment. You're at home, so you can always like slide your hands up under your shirt. Give yourself a little bit of oil on your chest, on your belly, on your neck. Eat. So, setting up. Settling in. Feel the earth beneath you. And soften your body to receive that support. Let any holding, any effort in your breath go. And enjoy these moments to rest and to restore yourself in Shavasana.
breathing. Follow the next breath in. And release it out. Breathe in all the way to your fingers and to your feet. And gradually invite some simple movement into your body. And take your time to transition. Really let yourself enjoy this return back to your seat. And to close, uh, I'd like to share with you a poem. Uh, this is written by a dear friend and a dear treasured uh, human. Her name is Kate Coyle. And um, this is a poem she wrote years ago. In a, in a collection called Home. And in fact, I want to be sure that you can hear me. So I'm going to, hi, I'm going to bring you closer. <laughs> yes, I can do that. We can do that, can't we? Does that work? Thank you, Maya. I'm glad you can hear me. Okay. This is from um, a poem called I Sit in the Sky. Trust. We should be holding one another singing in prayer and gratitude for this miracle. Instead, we pretend to steadfastly believe in the illusion of our separateness, despite the familiarity when our forearms touch and the recognition in smiling eyes. We sit in the lonely comfort that we are closer to the stars. From the night sky, lights look like sprinkled fairy dust, bioluminescence in the depth of the ocean, a reflection of the stories above one still lake, a mirror. We should be holding one another, singing in prayer and gratitude for this miracle. Mm. So in this moment, wherever we are, wherever you are, um, Hold yourself, bring your hands somewhere onto your body, wherever it feels good to you. Let your eyes close again and tune in. Notice how you're feeling, body, mind, heart. Know that whatever is moving through you right now, you are a miracle, part of this miracle. And that whatever you are experiencing in any moment, the vessel of this body that you have can sustain and support you. Know that you are held, that we are holding each other. And trust. And trust in this moment. 
and the miracle of this moment. Mm -hmm. And then the miracle that right now, you in your little life, in your little head, in your little body, in your stories, you are connected to billions of others. And all we need to do is to simply plug in, plug into the earth, plug into the sky, plug into your heart, plug in and connect to this collective waking up. Let's close with our voices. Those of you that know the Shanti Pak Mantra, please join me. We've been sharing it for the last, uh, I don't know, year together. And if you don't know it, listen, and next time you'll join in. You can bring your palms together. And breathe into your base. Om Masatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrityur Mamritam Gamaya Om Masatoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrityur Mamritam Gamaya Om Masatoma Sat Gamaya Tamasoma Jyoti Gamaya Mrityur Mamritam Gamaya Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 From the unreal lead me to the real from darkness, lead me to light. From death, lead me to immortality. May all beings be happy and free. Om peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Namaste. Hmm. Thank you so much to all of you who joined, who are here, who are still here. Um, wow, <laughs> it's really uh, it's really amazing to feel and just to know um, that as all of us go inward into our homes and into our spaces, that we can share and we can support each other. And I'm so um, honored to. Yeah, to be able to share with you just the simple things that um, have been a great, a great deal of support to me. So wishing you love. Um, maybe we'll keep doing this. Definitely keep checking into the YouTube channel. We have some recorded videos coming. And oh, thanks, pal. My husband is here. Um, and thank you for being with the kids so I could do this. And um, on Monday, I will let you know on Monday for sure, Marianne is going to be doing a laughter yoga. And that's going to be Monday evening, Lugano time. Uh, Marianne, if you type right now and tell me what time, we'll put it up. But I think it'll be the usual 7.30. Um, and boy, do we need a laugh. <laughs> I send you so much love and um, take really good care. Bye. Bye-bye. Yes, yeah, 7.30. Thank you, Marianne. 7.30 on Monday, laughter yoga. I'll share about it. Bye, everyone.